So, welcome to all of our golden ticket winners um, uh, taking part on our Facebook competition to come and have coaching with Gareth Potts. Uh, so Gareth's going to spend a couple of hours with you all, uh, taking you through a um, uh, coaching uh, system. Uh, we've actually got some cues to give you as well, so I know some of you already got your own cues, but we're going to give you a cue as well, so maybe you'll have a spare if you already have your own, but uh, here's one each for you yeah. to take away. It's actually yeah. a period and so made in England, made in Liverpool, um, worth £90. So um, enjoy and hopefully it will bring you some, some luck and I'll pass you over to Gareth and I, I hope you enjoyed this afternoon. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Okay. All right. right, we'll start off with, if anyone wants to ask any questions during what we're doing then obviously feel free to just ask me if you're unsure about anything that, that, I'm, that, that I say or anything that you want to ask. But, any particular area of your game that, that you feel you know you know you want sharpening up or anything you're unsure of or certain aspects that you can't do particularly well and but if we start off with the break off which is probably one of the most asked questions of and it is certainly at the top level it's one of the most important parts of the game because at the top level it almost becomes like um, the serve at tennis if you like where you're supposed to hold from your break as in you're supposed to hold that you serve at tennis um, and you know when you break your opponent you know if your opponent breaks off and comes up dry and you clear it's almost like you've broke serve if you like because at the top level you know it really really is important and if you're playing a match first to seven first to eight and you lag off through breaks first so obviously you lag up and down the table and whoever gets closest to the top cushion breaks sometimes that can be the difference because if the match goes to seven each and you've won the lag obviously you're obviously you're breaking in the decider and you know when you're playing on brand new tables brand new balls with you know brand new cloth you know i would say a high percentage of the time you're making balls from the break and whatever rules you play whether it's world rules or um, black ball rules once you've once you've broke off as long as you've made a ball not necessarily if you clear up every time but you're allowed to take control of the frame you know so as long as you're getting the first visit each time you can always do something and, and to, but obviously pools pool and there's a huge amount of luck involved and I think until they get a set of rules similar to what I was explaining to yourself about China where the the eliminate the lock involved so there's like there they've they've, they've took the flukes out they've um, the the skill shots but you have to play a skill shot so I know that you know you play the the black ball rules and like I was saying in one of the videos when you came in earlier that a skill shot's okay when it's actually a skill shot so when you've played a shot that you were meant to play uh, yeah so. You don't want to be stretching for it, and you don't, and you don't want it to be, you don't want it be, to be too, too close to you because you need to find the maximum acceleration. But I normally break off. So, let's say if we put a little chalk mark there, that's the middle of the table, and I normally r break off roughly in the middle, mm -hmm. with the white probably a couple of cent, a couple of millimeters back from the line, because I know that that's my, that's the point where you know where I'm hitting the ball at the maximum acceleration point and seriously it is literally like if I was to move it to there you know if, if you were to make me close my eyes I would I would know that that's not in the right place it is literally like I know that it has to be there I know that might sound a little bit but that's I know where I break off from and, and it's so it doesn't have to be jumping up in the air and hitting the ball as hard as you can it's literally as you can see there it's giving me what probably close to a foot there of me, of me pulling the cue back and then comes out and then I've got basically that much power to hit the ball and the way that the break off is is you design what you're supposed to do is drive through the cue ball so you design to drive down through the cue ball so not hit the white and your cue flick up towards the ceiling because that's where you're losing power if you watch the nine ball players you know sometimes they break off on the side and if you watch them they break off and I've got plenty you know pictures at home and stuff where I've broke off my cue's gone so far through that it's actually bent on the table that's because you're driving down through the ball not hitting the ball and flicking up in the air because you're just losing so much power so you need to create as much power as possible obviously and then the power that you hit the front ball has then obviously got to transfer through the rest of the pack I can't stand here and tell you how to pot a ball off the break every single time because I don't know how to do that. 
And if anyone does know how to pot a ball every single time, I'd like them to tell me. You know, it's literally just, you hit the balls as well as you can from the best position that's right for you. So you can only do everything right and you can get the balls flying all around the table, but you're not guaranteed to make one because they just don't go in the same place every time. Mm. So this is how I would normally break off. In the same place, I'm going to drive down through the slate, and, but I'm not going to jump up in the air. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to move. So as you can see, I'm queuing low. But the reason I'm queuing low is because when I come back, I'm going to drive down through the slate. I'm not actually going to hit that low, but because of where my hand is, if I'm, you know, I'm queuing up there, I don't seem to be able to get the same. With my bridge hand, I'm placing my first finger on this side of the queue, and my thumb is keeping my finger, uh, is keeping the queue straight so therefore it can only go through in a straight line because I'm pinching it with my finger there and I'm pushing it onto my thumb yeah I'm not too hard so obviously it physically won't go backwards and forwards but what I do is as I pull the cue back and the cue gets narrower I squeeze my finger a little bit tighter to keep it straight if you understand what I mean because if I kept the gap in between my finger and my thumb the same which it needs to be there because my cue is thicker if I kept it the same, when I pull it back to there, now there's a big gap look. Mm. Because my cue goes thinner. You know what I mean? Which then allows it to go like that, side to side as you're going through. So you have to squeeze that finger to keep keep the cue still look. Because any movement side to side is obviously no good because you're not hitting the cue ball where you mean to hit it then. So there look. As it comes back, I'm going to slightly pinch that finger, look, so see how the gap doesn't get any thinner? Yeah. And then as it goes through, look. So my back arm is going to come back in a straight line and drive through in a straight line. Slight pause. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> so... We all, uh, we all have a go at that one by one. Do, do, you all, do you all have a certain place where you would break off from? Or, or, or I've got two. Yeah. You've got two. Remember you said before that you can't down to your pot. Yeah. But I've got a break where virtually the top red. Not, not every time we're going to the pocket. Yeah, OK. Yeah. I've got one similar. We're on that side. Yeah. I break from this side I break well, just to the right. Back yeah. a little bit. Maybe. Yeah. Well, what we were doing when um, when when I was in uh, when I was playing in China, we were doing um, we developed a break, and it's strange because it only worked on the main TV table, and on the out we had, we had a main TV table in the middle, and then on the outside tables there was there was seven outside tables, and the break didn't quite work the same on the outside tables as it did on the TV table. That's why I say a, every table will break differently, and at the end of the day, the the balls are not always going to be exactly in the same place. They're always not going to be touching exactly the same place. So you'll never, you'll never. But I understand that you can get balls moving to a certain direction of pockets. For example, when I was in China, what we were doing was doing what we call the pot break. So I was breaking with the white about two inches to the left of the of the middle. So you'd say about there. Hitting the balls literally at this sort of pace it was no harder than this. And what I was doing with they called the pop break is obviously it was it was with the American balls and you literally just popping the white back over the blue spot and just sort of parking the white anywhere around here. And the two wing balls, which which they call uh, the wing balls, as in not 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 these balls, but the two second t the second two balls down here were going towards the middle one each. If you hit it too hard, the balls would go. If you hit the brake too hard, the balls would go high. If you hit the brake too soft, the balls would go low. At the right, at the right pace, one would go in each pocket. What was happening a couple of times is one would go low and one would go high. And the reason for that is because the pack was slightly offset, not to the middle. So you can get balls moving in a certain direction, but obviously it's not always it's not always guaranteed and the problem with that is a lot of the time to get that to happen it's when you hit the brake softer it's not like as hard as I just hit the brake there is obviously not as hard as I can hit it but if I was to hit the brake with everything it's almost like just oh, just see if I can pop one when you're saying you know you have a break where you normally get maybe what do you normally get the second or third ball down going towards going towards the middle 
Oh, you get the top red. Or what do you cut across the first ball then, do you? I basically it's just right at the centre line, just back on from the ball line. Like, and I just hit it down dead centre. Yeah, let's, right, let's, um... Uh, let's have, let's have, sorry, what was your name again, Chris? Let's have, let's have a look at let's have a look at your break first, then Chris, of how you're saying. So so you so basically you're trying to get yeah. you're trying to get the first red into the middle. Now you also have to remember at the pool you've got to make four balls at the cushion. So it's okay trying to make this ball into the middle, but if you're hitting the pack too soft yeah. and you don't make the ball, then you've got to make sure four balls are hitting the cushion. I've had, I've had a few foul breaks, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's a problem you will have because if you pot the ball, then that's okay. Do you find in tournaments that where you break, I break pretty similar from sort of the same position as you and slightly back. Um, I've got, I used to break from the centre with a lot of top and drive the white through, but I found that collisions would often cannon the white somewhere that I didn't want. Well, the reason why I wouldn't advise the plane with, a, with so much top spin is because the top spin takes the pace out of the cue ball. So basically, what's happening is, uh, is obviously the, you're playing with topspin, so the the, the the cue ball hits the ball, but then it's basically obviously got loads and loads of rotation, and it's taking the power out of the cue ball. Where obviously a, a, a stun is exactly the same if you screw the ball, because if you screw the ball too much, it's just hitting the ball and pinging back off as fast as it can. So it's not delivering the maximum amount of power into the balls. With the stun shot, it's hitting with its maximum force, and the reason why it's coming back is because the cue ball is lighter than the object balls. That explains one of the problems I've had recently. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Because the cue ball is lighter, that, that, that cue ball is lighter than, than the object ball, when it hits the, when it hits the ball, it's naturally going to jump back. Even when you play with topspin, so if I was potting this ball into there with hard topspin, as hard as I can, what actually happens in slow motion is it hits it. Although it's spinning forward, it actually comes back before it starts going forward because the cue ball is, is, is smaller than, 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 than the object ball. If I was to play it on that table with those American balls, as soon as it hits it, it naturally starts going forward. But because it's smaller, it jumps back slightly first. So that's exactly the same with the break. If you have too much topspin, it's just releasing power. Let me get that touching for you before you... Um <laughs> and you know like th this table's obviously got a spot on but the, 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 the way to just mark if the balls are in the right place the way to just mark if the balls are in the right place is um, imagine if you drew a cross from there to there and there to there the, the cue ball has to be uh, the, the black ball has to be right in the middle look so you can see if I was, if you need to pot it into there and aim to pot it into there, it needs to, the eight ball should be right in the middle. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see it, you'll see it, you go to a table and the spot will be either too low or too high. This is a way of just knowing if it should be because it should be right in the middle of the of the cross. So go on, let's see. Um, See that way, that time, you hit across it this way, yeah. but the red came this way. Yeah. So you just see that that went the complete opposite way to the thought, because he thought he was going to make the ball into there, mm. but he actually came this way and hit it high. Yeah. But also, the problem with that break is what, what uh, Chris is doing there is, Chris and yeah. yeah, what Chris is doing there is, um, even if he'd have made that ball, so if I put them balls back, where, you know, even if he'd have made this ball, you see how they still, it's still like, you know, that's a tough finish. It's not like, an it's, not like it, it's not like a comfortable finish, yeah. no. Uh -huh. So I understand making a ball, you can, like I said before, you, could, you can take control. So you know, if he's potted a red, he can, you know, depending on the rules you play, if you're playing black ball rules, you have to obviously pot a ball first. World rules, you could take control and obviously, because you're already on reds. I understand making a ball is important, but also what is important is getting the balls open. I mean, if you notice when I break off, I think more than half the balls came past the middle. You know, so you're getting a you're getting a huge split, which is obviously easier to taking the finishes out. I mean.